Hey guys. All right, well, today we have something old and then a couple things new. This is Tundra Artica from Saponificio Veracino, an Italian soap maker. It's a hard soap, one of my favorites of all time. Uh, the scent is mostly sandalwood or agar, and it has hints of lichen and cranberries. Both of those are not dominant, but they are added for interest, but also for their kindness and good things for your skin. They do something like moisturize or antibacterial or different things like that. You can look it up on their website uh, and see. The other things are new are these two items. The Razor Rock Hawk. This is version number one. It's a very light aluminum razor. The Umo Motherlode, brown shafts with white tips. Very, very soft. Matter of fact, it's so soft, it's one of the few synthetics that I actually like. I've used it once in a test lather during August, and now let's use it in a real lather. I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy it. And look how big this is, and this is only a 24 millimeter knot. This is one of those uh, Shave Forge. If you want to get the U.S. side of shipping, a little more expensive, you can go less money and go with DS Cosmetics on AliExpress and get these handles, and they come in different colors. They're very ergonomic. It's a really nice design. If you're looking for inexpensive ergonomic handles, it's hard to uh, beat these guys. And notice it's not soaking. It didn't soak or anything because it's a synthetic and that's not required. It, I prefer to soak my badgers, but it's pretty much required on the boars to you know, soften up those hairs. All right, so this is a single edge razor. Now, it, as you can see by the width here, this is much too small to house one of those gem type blades, the single edge blades. And so what this is, it's wider than that. And so that means this is an artist club size blade. And let me take it out and show you. I'm not as adept at, yeah, there we go. Okay. So that's how the blade looks. And you can see it. this razor head has these little posts that help with alignment. Looks like it's going to keep it in perfect alignment. And then here's the, the base plate. And that's the two holes where the posts go. And then it screws in. Now this model of the Razor Rock Hawk, this unscrews. And you know what? This is the same threading as the top cap screw. And so you can actually take this handle, flip it over, and have the narrow end down here. It looks weird, but you can do it. Maybe that's what they intended. I don't know why they included a, a screw bottom here. Uh, maybe to put other things on there for weight, to change the balance of the razor, I'm not sure. So this is an aluminum razor, and this blade has been used two or three times. I used it in my Artist Club razor, the one that kind of looks like a, a straight razor. And so now we're gonna use it in the Hawk. Uh, I received this not because I ordered it specifically, because I ordered several, uh, a box of soaps and this came in with it. I don't expect to like it too much because just because of the weight, I like heavier razors. I discovered in the past that the lighter razors, because someone gave me an ATT above the tie aluminum razor. And while I enjoyed it okay, it just wasn't as nice because you kind of have to pull it through your hairs because it's so light. It doesn't have that inertia to, to kind of flow through your hairs easily. So we are gonna try that guy out today. I looked at the exposure and it looks like the exposure is kind of on the, it's definitely on the positive side. So I don't expect it to be super smooth. I do expect it to be consistent and firm because the Artist Club blades are a thicker blade than our regular uh, DE blades, safety razor blades. And so it'll be firm. It's not going to be all flexy and vibrating, that sort of thing. So it'll be fun to see how that works out. 
Uh, so let me get my face wet and we'll start lathering up. I have a day and a half worth of growth on my face and so I'm glad that, you know, perhaps this razor is, uh, is gonna be able to take care of that with its extra blade exposure. I did put a little bit of water in this. Manufacturer actually recommends taking boiling water and pouring it on the soap before your shave. That's definitely more than I'm interested in doing. I've always had great results just by putting a little bit of water on it. And then I'm gonna take my um, synthetic brush here, run it under the water. Like I said, you don't need to soak it. So I'm just getting water all the way through it. And there we go. And I'll shake out a good bit of it. And so you can definitely see the top of the soap is, is wet. And let's do 30 second load and see what happens. 30 seconds has given me just the right amount of lather in the past with a slightly different brush. So let's just see what happens today. These synthetics often pick up a lot of soap and so they sometimes don't have very much need of a long load time. And that's 30 seconds. Looks like I've got a lot of soap here. So I bet I won't have any problems. Also, this uh, soap container is a wooden one that I bought off Amazon, I believe. I believe the Kingsley, I believe, is the maker. Um, and so if you find one that looks like this and it's a Kingsley, then, then that is, is going to be the right one. It's not super airtight because it's not supposed to be. Um, and so you will get a little bit of fragrance reduction over the a long course, a long period of time. But most of you guys probably don't have as many soaps as I do. So you can run through your soaps a little quicker. I need to use this more because it really is my favorite. Um, I do have a, a little label on the bottom telling me what soap is on it. I need to put maybe some tape on it or something to make it waterproof. But uh, so I'm, I'm, I recommend this bowl. The Saponi Fissio Veracino puck fits down in here pretty well. And, and so I'm happy with that. Uh, I haven't used it very long. And so in terms of longevity, I can't speak to that. But I don't, I don't see any splitting or anything like that. Boy, I guess I have had it a year, maybe two years. So, I mean, it's lasted that long with, without any indication of age. Of course, I haven't used this soap too many times, unfortunately. All right, so Kingsley soap container or bowl is what that is. All right. Start working up the lather. It uh, kind of integrates pretty quickly, so we can go right to adding some water. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be adding more than two teaspoons, so I just went ahead and added one and a half. synthetics with their bristles that are slightly twisted, not twisted, kind of variating serpentine-like in a minor way going back and forth and they have a little bit of texture to them. Well, this camera's not going to be able to show you probably, but that no doubt helps the agitation of the soap and so that's why Whipping up a lather with that synthetic is often faster than with the natural bristles. So two and a half teaspoons of water now.
three and a half teaspoons. It's like I want to have plenty of water. Hear one of my roommates hollering down there on a conference call and he doesn't realize how loud he's being. It's actually one floor below me. Well, as you can see, tons of water here has given us tons of lather. And it's still kind of rigid. Let's uh, lift it up out of the bowl and Kind of see, yeah, see, we, we we have some stretch, but still room for more. Now, I bet I need to stop. Uh, I don't think this is a soap that I can quite take as, as far as I might usually like to, but, oh, the slickness is just really nice. I believe these guys are also a vegan soap, so they're another great example of how just because it's vegan, it doesn't mean that you're going to get a bad, uh, you're not going to get great slickness or that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, terrific. Yeah, I can still, even after a lot of that rinse has happened, I can still feel some nice sleekness on my fingers. They've just got a great base there. And I kick myself because I collected several of the Saponificio Veracino soaps without recording which version it was, because at that time, that was fairly early on, I realized that I liked that brand a lot, but I didn't realize how the formulations could really be different, and knowing the version like 4.1, 4.2, or 3 uh, is, is a little important. I mean, it's important, it's not really important for me, because I know I'm enjoying the soap, but in terms of sharing it with people and that sort of thing, um, it is important, but unfortunately, I don't have that info. All right, well. I'm going to get my face wet, and then we will lather up. Try out this hawk. I have no idea what to expect. Yeah, I've got a lot of lather. Very soft. You know, softness is your only measure. You might be hard pressed to find better than the synthetics because you know they're able to manufacture those tips with such precision and they're, they're just able to be so soft. Now I'm seeing some some pitting and the way it looks on my face, I can kind of tell that it needs more water. So let's uh, see what we can do about that. That's what happens when you load a lot of soap. This brush sure picked up a lot. You sure can shave with a drier lather if you want. If that feels good for you, do it. But if you have skin sensitivity issues and you are experiencing dryness on your you know, face or You feel like maybe the razor is not having as much glide or your face isn't feeling as protected in terms of the razor moving across your face. You may want to work on adding more water to your lathers because all those things can be alleviated with a, a wetter lather. Don't need that extra concentrate there. Oh, it's terrific scent. I just love it.
So I've tried the Tuxedo, the Cashmere, the Timberwolf, Sinbad, the Plasson type uh, from Maggard, and they all have too much backbone. They shove my skin around, kind of poke and shove and really springy. Oh, this lather, this is it right here. Much better. But this guy has the less backbone. So it's just right. So yeah, I ended up adding another, maybe even another teaspoon of water via the brush. So that means my lather in my bowl also needs some water. So I'll let this sit on my face for just a second while I integrate the part I added into this lather. Oh, that smells tremendous. idea what angle to use so let's just kind of start off with a typical angle you might use for double-edged razor hey that's pretty good yeah it's it's doesn't feel harsh doesn't feel aggressive you can definitely see why people might use this razor. Choose this as their you know, main tool. Aluminum has some advantages. It's very nimble and easy to maneuver with your hands. But perhaps the biggest one that people like is the non-corrosion. The even stainless steel can sometimes stain over time or uh, you know, even rust in some few cases, um, but aluminum is just not going to do that. But I, you know, I mean, this is gliding through the hairs nicely. But I like to, I like a heavier razor. But I can, I can see the uh, attraction to this guy. I rinsed, and now let's put on that second pass. This is just a 24 millimeter knot. You can see how it displays quite large. Feels great. If I wanted to switch to a synthetic, this would be the knot I'd use. And as you can see, it picks up soap real easy. So let's move to the cross grain here. I'm not really finding any problems with the angle. Even if it's, I'm trying to maintain a balanced angle with the safety bar and the head, both kind of contacting the face uh, uh, with equal pressure. But it seems very user friendly. it's very light and so it uh, does not take a strong hand to maneuver it so it's easy to keep a light touch on your face very natural with this razor it's uh, cutting really well very comfortable now like today if I ever forget to mention which blade I used you can always go down to the description and there's pretty much always uh, the all the gear that I used and how many uses in many cases how many uses it's been through so you can know what age this is a Schick Proline P30 Artist Club blade I believe that's correct but you can check the description if that's important to you 
And with the artist clubs, you don't have as big of a selection as you do with the DE blades. We have tons of DE makers, uh, not makers, but tons of DE models we can play around with. And even among the several different artist club blades, all the reviews I'm getting are that half of them are junk and you shouldn't use them. And so that restricts your choices even more. However, um, it does seem that there's a couple out there that are, do really well for a lot of people. I'm not an authority enough to, to be able to say which ones those are, but you can do your research if you want. This is a very comfortable pass now. You can hear the blade and I can very, very, very lightly feel it. It's just, it's very nice. So the razor is giving me a nice shave experience. We'll have to see how close the cut is. Of course, this razor is easier to use than the Artist Club Shavette that I use, the folding feather, you know, that I used because it's just you're more used to this type of of stroke. And there we go. The rinses have been really nice with this soap. Very slick, skin feels great. And I've got, <laughs> got about four more passes of lather in the in the bowl there. So let's uh yeah, and like I said, we're dealing with a very a rigid blade, and so I'm not getting any kind of tenuous, you know, feel with this one. It's definitely, I mean, I, I could get cut if I, you know, moved improperly or something like that, made a bad, bad decision. Or, of course, you can always get cut if you move from side to side with these types of razors. Um, but I felt very in control. I didn't feel any danger. So if you're uh, worried about maybe too much aggression, it doesn't seem like this one has it. Now, this is the version one. I don't know what they changed when they uh, upgraded and made, uh, made version two or whatever the current iteration is, but I like this. I'm probably not gonna use it very much. I'll probably sell it, but it was inexpensive. I might not sell it. I might keep it around just, for, just to have a representation of the artist club style but in a handle DE type format like this, as opposed to the, the straight razor style of artist club configurations. Guys, that's a really close shave. I'm hard pressed to find any length on any of the tips. Most of them, I just see the bare tips of the, you know, the end of the whisker instead of seeing any length on whiskers. And, and that's in my troll spot. So this is a good option for me. Uh, in terms of effectivity, comfort, very nice. I uh, have yet to find out how long the Artist Club blades go. They are thicker and different than DE blades, so I don't know if I could take one to a hundred or not. I just don't know. Um, but this is one I've used before in another razor, so we'll keep... I might have to get an em engraver or something because this blade didn't have any wording on it at all, and so if you don't keep track, you could mix them up. All right, well, very happy with that. I did give myself a little bit of irritation somewhere around here, and I believe it was just kind of a careless stroke, um, but it's, it's, it's really actually hard to pinpoint. It's, it's so light. And I forgot to bring in an aftershave. Well, that works out because on standby in the bathroom here, I've got Midnight Stag from uh, Chiseled Face. And so I... I'm a big fan of that. It's got some menthol in it. It's got alcohol, so I will feel sometimes a little bit of sting. Sting's very light, pretty much gone at this point, so it looks like my uh, technique was good in terms of not generating too much um, irritation or uh, tenderness. Okay, I'm gonna clean up. So I ended up using I got a feeling I used four T 
tea, teaspoons, two full syringes, and then this. Or did I use one full syringe? Now, I believe this is five and a half teaspoons of water used. And that makes sense because I have a quite a surplus of soap in here. I could I could start over and do easily do another three pass shave. See, look at that performance. Look at that stretch. I it wasn't quite that good before, and I you know I couldn't remember if this was a, a real high performance soap that I could really hydrate, you know, in this type of way. And now remember that I can it's just terrific really nice soap base and it's a terrific soap base regardless kind of like Southern Witchcraft's new formula uh, as of like 2018 um, it's a great base no matter how you slice it whether you compare it with tallow or vegan soaps they both are vegan makers and they make wonderful wonderful soap bases And there we go, after a good drying out, the Motherload Knot looks <laughs> almost good as new. It does group a little bit, you know, but it's just so, it's so soft that it kind of does that even when it's not slightly damp. But I just rubbed it up on the towel and he's pretty much ready to go. Nice advantage, a quick cleanup with the synthetic brushes. That was a one and a half day growth and this razor mowed through it very, very easily. So that's pretty cool. No problem there. So there we go. One of my all time favorite soaps. And I'm also reminded how nice that soap base is. The Tundra Artica from Saponificio Veracino SV. I should have said that more, right? So that went well. The mother load, just terrific and enjoyable and soft. I still prefer the personality and the slight variation in the animal hair brushes, the boar and the badger. Um, but who knows, you know, I'm working through the, some boar brushes that I have. I've just gathered up so many because they're many of times the boars are so cheap that it's really kind of inexpensive to gather up a collection of them to be able to just choose and vary and things like that. And if that's your personality, then Boars might be a great way to go for you because badgers are twice as much or a lot more. Um, and so most of my boars are kind of young. And so they haven't, while many of them are comfortable and enjoyable, they haven't stepped into their maturity and being fully broken in with ton, with all the split tips, you know, uh, in place. And so I don't yet know the awesomeness that awaits me for boars. And so in a few years, when I start getting some of those boars to that place, who knows what brushes I'll prefer, you know, and there's always room for change, right? You could be a badger guy your whole life and then switch to synthetics or, or vice versa, you know, and that's okay. There's room for that, right? So uh, I really like the mother load knot. It's, some people said it was, it's so different because it's, the fibers are made in the makeup brush kind of genre instead of shaving brush which is perfect because all the synthetic shaving brushes that I tried just weren't all that, weren't all that, they were too firm. Except for, I did have a Timberwolf that came close to being okay when it was mounted really high. So at least that one came close. Uh, and I really enjoyed the Hawk. Uh, it's a consistent shaver. I totally could see why somebody would just stick with that for their whole life. I really could. The Artist Club blade is firm, kind of like those injector blades. It's, it's firm, and so you're going to get a whole different feel with that blade edge. Um, just really, really nice. No fear from it. Just a nice cutter. Well designed. And uh, it, it is fun occasionally to maneuver that, that uh, lightweight razor. And I did not feel myself it's experiencing any kind of drag or having to pull it through my hairs. And so that's good. That did happen with the ATT aluminum razor. But with this one, I was just, it was a very normal action. I felt really good. All right, guys. Well, there's a couple of the new things I promised to be showing you in September. I've got some more stuff on my list and we'll, we'll definitely get to that in future shaves. All right, guys, this is Sugar Daddy Shaves and I hope there's been something good in here for you. Take care. Good night.